Okay, in this video we're going to go through the steps that we find are easier for everyone to work on the tail section of the nacelles. Um, this tends to be the uh, most intricate part of the ship to do and if you can tackle this section uh, you can pretty much uh, complete the entire ship with no issues. Uh, I know in our previous video we showed um, installing the masks on the on the nacelles that weren't put together so now that we've uh, got our nacelles put together, we've got our paint, we've got primer, we've got filler, we've got everything else on these things. Sometimes they change the the size of the nacelle because we've added product to the plastic. So we'll go through a few steps here. We found that work a little bit better for everyone and uh, show you how we'll paint the uh, port side nacelle as the starboard side here has all been done. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get out our masks and what we've done using the Trek modeler guide or the paint guide We've actually put our, our numbers on here of what we're actually going to be painting. So our Ys are the gold, there's the Rs are the red, the Gs are the green, and the Bs are the blue. Just so we can kind of know that ahead of time what's going on. We'll also go through this process of installing this and how we use the gray sheets that we call as our replacement sheets uh, to help you out in the painting, uh, painting steps. So with that, let's uh, get started on the other nacelle and we'll see if we can get it to look like this one. Okay, so this is the sheet we've added to our instruction guide. Uh, I'm explaining now the revision we've made to actually make this tail section work a little easier for you. I think in our uh, previous video we had you starting on this section here, going from number one, number two, number three, and working our way back. Uh, what we found is the best thing to do is to start with this first one. Um, this will also explain also on the painting techniques which we're going to go through. So I'm going to show you how we start that and we'll bring the nacelle in. So what we've did is we've cut this piece out. Now I've left the, I've left the paper on the back of this just for uh, this demonstration purpose. We'll take it off here shortly. So like I said, when we uh, first did the video, we were having you start at this outside edge. Um, you could line it up this way and run run towards the center of the cell. And what we found is that made this part here a little difficult that you might be sitting in this orientation or this orientation. The most important orientation is this line right here. This line has to be straight or perpendicular is what we call it to the nacelle. Then everything will look fine. And then you can see that you can see that in this one. You can see here how these lines sit perpendicular with the nacelle. Now if these lines here were off Either way, it, it doesn't matter about these. This is what your eye is going to see. If this isn't straight, it doesn't matter what you've done here. It's going to look crooked. So this is where we're going to start. We're going to make sure that this section here is perpendicular, and then we're going to bend it back. Now, hopefully, we have some issues because the more issues we can have on video, the more things we can help you um, fix. Uh, one of the issues we might have with ours is these, these uh, sections here. On ours... Uh, we decided we were when we were doing our filling we were sanding around these things and it just become a nightmare because um, every time your sanding block touched one of these you took an edge off so what we did is we sanded them right off and then we just took some regular styrene plastic and reproduced them and glued them back on so now they're nice and straight there's no sanded edges on them now having said that um, maybe one of these was put a millimeter or half a millimeter one way or the other or it was cut a little bit too big so the masks might not fit 100% but we'll show you how to work around that it's it's a modeling thing if it um, if you have an issue you just resolve it and fix it and move forward okay so let's take the backing off this one and we'll start assembling we'll start putting it on here okay like, like I said in the instruction guide it tells you to perpendicular this and to start um, as tight to the wing as you can get so what you're gonna do is you're gonna now that we've cut it off you're gonna stick this right against the wing and just kind of let it go and then do a visual perpendicular line here and when you're happy with where that's sitting then you can smooth this to the top and to the bottom And once you got that on, then do the same thing we always do is just pull the clear off. And we'll move on to the next section. Okay, so moving forward, our next one, according to our sheet, is the 
the for this one at the end, so the number two. So we're going to do that one. Now what we want to do with these ones is we want to make sure that they sit right against this wing. So we're working down in this corner here first. So down in this corner along the bottom. I really don't care how this side goes up here. We can fix that later. My main goal is to make sure it sits tight up against the wing. And I'm going to show you why in this video why we need to do that. So you just get as close as you can tight to the wing and move it to the top. Now you can see right here it's well actually let's get the clear off. I can show you this a little easier. Okay, so you can see on this one, I don't know if it shows up there. You can see how this one's a little long in here, not a big deal. And actually where this circle lined up, not a big deal. We can fix that. That's what we want to see on this video. I want to show you guys how to fix this stuff. I want I don't want you guys saying that uh, you can't get it resolved. This just could be because of the way you know the way this is uh, we filled in here and added paint and everything else it's shifted this because we're talking millimeters out okay so then our last one to put in would be the one right in in here that's right here now again I know in our previous video we talked about having this one a millimeter over this one and over this one if it works out that way fine if it doesn't don't fret about it so you can either install this one as you as I said in the previous video you try and have this so it's a millimeter over this way and a millimeter that way this might not work because of the way this is resitting now so what we can do is figure out one side to work and then if there's too much white gap on this side we're going to cover that up with masking tape but the whole goal is to try and get this as tight down to the the wing as you can get it and then move your way up take the clear off All right, so this one worked. Uh, the one on our other nacelle didn't work as well. So this is this is an unfortunate error because if it wouldn't have worked, I could have showed you how to fix it. But I'm going to explain what we're going to do. See, so you can see that dark blue line here. So this one is actually sitting over top of this. That's what we want. There's two G's on this, which means this whole section here is going to be green anyway. So it doesn't matter. Had this been a little bit like you can just see down here, you can see a little bit of white here. Once you start spraying, just take some masking tape, cut it like a sixteenth of an inch long, just lay it over top of that before you spray it, and that'll stop any uh, iridescent paint from getting in there. We'll go over that again once we once we start our painting. So now that we've got that one, now we can work on the bottom ones. Uh, we can start with the next one here. Again, a little bit overlap, tight up against. Um, the bottom of the wing. I'm sorry if my head is getting in the way here, but you can see how this doesn't doesn't fit exactly 100% because, like I said, with the with the new pieces we put in here, we might be off a bit, but that's okay. We'll get them. We'll work around that. Not a big deal. Now you can see the white line here. This is the white line we're going to have to deal with. Uh, once we start our painting, but that's not an issue. That's what we want to show you guys here. I'm just going to use the card here to kind of get them seated in this. <clears throat> now, one of the other things I want to mention, a lot of people are saying they like the blue masks on the saucer. The blue masks stick very well. Um, they don't curl. They don't peel up. Um, why did we use the blue ones on the cell? And the first thing, first reason we decided to use these is the blue masks are actually used for flat surfaces. Um, so we should actually use these for the saucer. However, the black masks cut a lot better as far as detail. So that's why we're using the black masks where we're using the blue mask we're going to use here. Because as you put them on here, if you're doing the, the rest of this nacelle, for those of you who've done it, as you put your blue mask down, you're going to start to see these these outer edges start to pull off because this blue mask wants to stay flat. It doesn't want, doesn't like to do a, a curved section. So these sides here might start lifting after a while. That's okay because that actually helps us out when we're doing this. That's less chance for you to scratch uh, your nacelle because as they start to lift, that gives you a place to start to pick and start to lift it up. That's why we use the blues here. Also, the blues are transparent. You can see through them. The blacks, they're all opaque. You can't see through them. So that was just a little 
little reason why we did that. So now moving on to this one. And you can see how this one worked out because we have the dark line in here. Okay, so we're going to end up putting this other side on here too, but I want to explain what we changed from the video to now. Is this section right in here, um, let's go back to this. So these sections here in the video and in the instructions we used to call to take these out. We just said these are just used to align. Now, now you can remove them, paint them gray, um, paint them gray and then put the blue back in here. What we found is it's actually easier to do that at the end once all your um, once all your aztec is done. So what we've come up with is, and we'll go through this step by step, but when, what we're going to do now is we're going to do all the aztec on both sides of the tail and then we're going to remove all the masks and leave this these masks, these five masks here till the very end. And then once they're done, then we're going to take some some spare blue or some masking tape and just put it on the outside of that then you can take those off paint it gray it's it's just a way easier a way simpler way of doing things um, one thing we found is this line here as it goes from mask to mask if it's not exactly right on um, there'll be a little bit of a deviation on the on the line so we thought if you do it this way at the end there's no deviation you get a nice crisp line so let's get ready to get the masks uh, for this back side and then we can move on to painting. Okay, just before we move on to the other side, I know some of you are going to send me some uh, emails or, or asking me why did I not put this piece in here. Um, the reason we did not put this piece in here is it's sitting right here and a lot of this is that powder blue and I didn't want to mask this off and paint this blue so I thought why don't I just paint this blue and I did a test fit before and it works perfectly is just kind of slide it in here after the fact it's a little tight there it'll snap into place and then it's easy to get out so that's why that section is not in we're going to do that after the fact okay so let's move on to this side okay so on the back side um, it's the same as the video was before. Um, we're, I don't want to start on this side and work my way this way because even though I want this side to be perpendicular, that's pretty easy to do with the mask. What I want to do is I want to make sure that these lines that are coming this way kind of match the lines going around so you have a nice easy movement through there. So what we're going to do here is so we're going to place this one in here now if you depending I don't know if you're going to be able to see this with the light but as I move back and forth here with my light my light is about 12 inches off the work surface and, and firing in this direction this direction I can kind of see where all the little lines are so I can move this around and put this kind of where I need it to be moving it this way and this way in order to get everything lined up perfectly and then that's our starting section now we just take this and we start moving it down. And here's the other reason I didn't want to put the bottom in. Without having the bottom in, if this is a little bit long, like I said, due to the amount of paint or how you've placed it in here, you're not going to have an issue down here. You can actually paint right to this, then install that piece later. And you can see here again, we're a little long on this side in here. That's not an issue either. So, once this is down, you can pull the clear up. And then once your clear is up, then you can set the rest of this down. Now one thing I didn't do on this one um, was those little circles. There's, uh, there's like a little oval and then two circles. Sometimes they're kind of sitting where the yellow is and I'm finding as I put them paint them they, they're not uh, they're not working too well in the yellow but you can always pull them off I wanted to show you that because I want to explain um, about the razor knife when you're pulling masks off do not do not um, attack it as like on a 45 degree do not pick up this way because as you do that you're going to put chips on the paint so what you want to do is you want to basically attack this thing 
so your blade is pretty much flush with the with the body so all you're going to do is just kind of pick it and just do a little pick up on it just kind of work at it and eventually you'll pick up a corner and then once you got a corner up then bring your tweezers in and pull a section off okay so we'll get that on the rest of them but let's continue on getting this these pieces here so now that we've got this piece on we're going to move on to our second piece second piece same thing you want to line this up with the line that's coming from the other one and then it should be like a millimeter overlap again if it doesn't work out we're going to show you how to fix that Let's see here we're we're a little short here that's okay that's another reason I want to show you guys what's going on how to fix all this we just do that with tape I mean as, as close as we've tried to make these masks absolutely perfect there's going to be issues with everyone depending on how you put them on you know being that we're we're talking millimeters or half millimeters or a tenth of a millimeter it's it's really difficult unless you put it in exactly the same place as everybody else it's not going to work out but there's ways to fix that Okay, so this is the one that we're going to work on. Now, this one we'd have no lines to, to line up because it's on this side. So now we can actually work with trying to get this thing perpendicular. So all I want to do is I want to just tap this one on the top to where it's going to go. And then you can even overlap it a bit. And then eyeball this and see where this is going to be perpendicular. And that looks pretty good. So we'll just rub it in the center and then move from the center to the top, center to the bottom. Again, this, the card will help you get it in here, but it only works if you get the clear off because the clear is pretty rigid. So let's take this off. And then if you want, you can rub this in there. But you can see how these start to pull off. Uh, pull away as it's bent in there. That's good. That's what gets you in there with these tweezers to uh, to take them off without scratching the paint. Okay, so I'm going to show you the steps that we came up with. Now this is also in the instruction guide and don't go by where these colors are. That's entirely up to you how you want the tail to look. Um, if you want to follow the Trek Modern Paint Guide you can do that too. Um, either way. So what we found is it's best to start with blue. Now you can do blue, red, and green in any order you want. Um, it's entirely up to you. We like blue, red, green, or blue, green, red. It really doesn't matter. The Where it really becomes important is step four and five. So uh, once we get to here, we're going to pull off all the ones that are supposed to be yellow. We're going to paint that yellow. Maybe give it one coat, maybe uh, one and a half, two coats, whatever. Okay, so then what you're going to do is you're going to pull off all these little mortar lines because we kind of call this the brick pattern on the nacelle. And these are the same yellow gold as from step four but if you don't cover the ones you did on step four they actually get two coats or three coats of gold the brick mortar gets the one coat of gold and that's where you're going to see two different kind of golds rather than mixing a, some other pigment to your gold to kind of make it look different so that's kind of um, what we're going to do here so what we need here is we need some scrap paper and what we're going to do is we're going to start picking off everything for us, everything that's blue. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but right along the edge, you can see this mask starting to lift a little bit. So that's what's going to allow us to get in here and just give this a little lift. Because this one here is blue. We're going to pull this off. These you do not need no more. These you can throw away. And this is where the gray sheets I'm going to show you later on after we get this done um, why you now use the gray sheets because um, with the blues um, they tend to tear as you're pulling them off or distort so we don't want to use those so again at the bottom just pick up a corner and then get your tweezers tweezers in here pick it up now as you're picking up make sure the the brick or the mortar pattern is staying behind because all we want to do is we want to paint the blue on the inside 
Again, just going to the corner, lifting it up. If it takes you a couple times to get there, don't worry about it, because the whole goal is not to scratch the ship, because all you want to do is just lift the corner, peel the blue off. Okay, I'm going to get the rest of those done, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we've pulled off all of the uh, blue sections. There's a lot on this side, not so many on this side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start filling up any of the areas that we can see. There's, um, there's a little white area right in here that I don't like um, around here, and then just a little joint right here. So what we're going to do is I've cut some, um, some masking tape off. So what we're going to do is just put one here, just to cover this up for now. There's a white line down in here. Just cover that up for now. One on this side. Just cover that up. Cover the strobe up. <clears throat> now the other thing is I haven't removed all these, but I will. But um, these little sections, these little sections right here, you want to cover those up because those are going to go, go yellow. So what we're going to do is just cover those up for now. And uh, I'll cover these ones up once I get all these pulled off. I can do that off camera. don't need to show you guys that. So we can just go around. Um, all of this I will do. I'll show you once all this is finished how we're going to do all that. I'll mask all this stuff off. And um, then we'll come back and uh, we'll shoot some blue on it. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay. We're just about all masked up here. Uh, getting ready to shoot our blue on. Just want to go over a few steps here on the bottom, just to kind of show you what's going to, what's going on. You can see right here how this mask was short, um, and this blue line needs to extend to this little piece here. So what you do is just cut small pieces of mask, and I know this becomes tedious, but this is all part of the hobby thing. And just kind of fill it in. just so that the blue goes all the way to the end and then use just regular mask pieces just to kind of fill any holes or any gaps that we have you can always you're going to remove these masks anyway or these uh, pieces of tape for the next step but it just kind of cleans it up and gets ready for this. So here's here's another one here. This is a white one that's just showing a little bit too much white for me. So I'm going to just cover that up because just the smallest amount of um, iridescent paint on the white is going to show up. So just so that's cleaned up. Um, I looked everywhere else. We seem to be fine. I've covered up those little. I'm gonna, let's just call them bullet holes for now. Those um, those pieces. Um, any of the masks that weren't tight to each other that were white have been covered over and um, the back sides all done there might be a few little pieces that I need to add just to cover up and that's it let's shoot the blue and we'll come back and uh, continue on all right so we got our blue on and um, we're getting ready to put on our gray masks now just a couple things going on here so now on um, this is where you use the gray masks as a replacement mask for when you're painting i I've, I've weeded these you don't have to weed these you can leave them on the sheet the way they are i just weed them so they come out a little bit better on the video um, and the other thing i want to talk about is the paints uh, the paints that we're using are an acrylic paint being that we're in canada we're not allowed the lacquer paints and the one that we've found to be the best for us is this uh, De La Rowney is uh, the best for us. And what this one is, this one has the pigment already in it. This bottle's almost empty. I mean, our other bottles at the paint booth. But um, you just shake it up till you get all the pigment off the bottom. And it comes with a little, little eyedropper. So you can just put it straight in your eye, uh, airbrush. Uh, paint on a couple really light dusting coats. I think our pressure is running around 13 to 15 psi, and we're using a medium tip. I think it's 0.3, uh, 
of a miller or something around that area, kind of your medium one. A couple of shots of that. And then uh, uh, some people were saying that it seems to come out a little bit watery. And I do agree it comes out a little bit watery, but when it dries, it dries completely flat. And then um, we can almost move ahead almost like within 10 minutes, five minutes of putting it on there. It's dry to the touch, it's ready to go at least that this mask won't pull it up. So, moving forward, we have the gray mask that's uh, on your sheet, I think it's sheet 12A, and it's an exact duplicate of the, of the blue masks. So what you're doing is you're just looking for all the pieces that you've pulled off in the blue, you wanna put back on in the gray. So you just find the piece that's here, pull it off, and these you don't need no clear vinyl, you're just gonna kinda of put this on by eye. Again, hopefully my head doesn't get in the way. Just move it around, it fits exactly. There we go. That's all you need to do with that. That's gonna protect that. Um, here's the other benefit of the gray. The gray mask now tells me that I've already did some uh, iridescent paint underneath there so I don't have to move, I don't have to touch that one again till the very end. So let's go ahead and get the rest of these on. Now once you're finished with this, you're going to see there's a whole bunch of these uh, like we did on the starboard side that uh, we don't don't use. Um, they're just there. I mean, we cut you exact copies of them. It, it, maybe you pick a different uh, area or a different color. So rather than just giving you the pieces you need to match the Trek paint guide, we just give you the whole thing and you can kind of come up with, uh, with the pattern you want. All right, well, I'll get the rest of this gray on here and then uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so we've taken uh, all of our gray masks and we've covered all the blue areas. And now, let's just, uh, we're going to continue on. We're going to do it as the sheet says. Uh, we're going to pull off everything that's red. Like the sheet says, that'll be our next step, just to keep in uh, with the way things are going. Um, again, uh, start with the red. We have the letter R's on there, so we know which ones they are. Again, you can throw these sections away, because once we're done, we're going to... Uh, use the gray sheets to uh, replace that. So I'm going to go ahead and pull all these off, uh, shoot it with the red, we'll come back and uh, we'll put the gray on it. Okay, so we uh, masked, finished masking off all the blues with the gray and we've removed everything with the uh, R on it for the red and then we've also put some masking tape over some areas of white that were showing through that we did not want to have. So that's the way it is and uh, let's uh, go ahead and shoot the red and we'll come back and finish that up. All right, well our red coat's been applied and uh, we gave it a little bit of hair dryer, uh, 10, so we're not even five minutes and we can start covering this up. Just to go back over with the uh, paints here, this is what we're using, that doesn't mean that's what you have to use. If you guys wish to buy the dry pigments and mix it with clear, that's entirely up to you. This is what we just found that works best for us, so this is what we're showing you. So, tonight just bef just like with the blues, you just take whatever section you painted red and place it over top. These are exactly exact cut of the blue, so they should fit exactly in there. Uh, if they don't, you can pick them up, put them back on as many times as you want. Um, if you see a little white line on there, just pull it off, put it back on. Um, and being that the gray is also transparent, if it's uh, let me just get a section here and I'll show you. If you put, you can see where this is not and this is in the right place. So uh, that, that helps out a little bit, but at least as close as, as close as you can is good enough. All right, well, I'll finish uh, masking these off and then I guess we'll move to uh, the green. All right, so the red has been covered, uh, the green has been removed, and we're going to go and shoot the green. Okay, so our green has been applied, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use the gray mask to cover the green, 
and pull off everything that we have the Y on or the gold and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, well we're getting closer. We have um, all of the blue and the red and the green covered and we have all of the gold exposed for the first one. We left the, the mortar in there for now. And uh, two more passes with the airbrush and we're gonna be done here. So we'll shoot some gold on this and then we'll be right back. Okay, so we've given uh, two coats of gold over all of the area we need. Don't need these anymore for this side. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off all of this brick mold, or sorry, um, pull off all of the mortar. Leave these areas exposed because there's two coats of gold on here now. Once we pull up all of this little mortar around here, it'll get one coat of gold and all of these will get another coat of gold. So these should be, these should appear darker than, than the mortar. So just pull up these little guys. And this is where, this is where using the mask that gives you pieces that actually fit in there exactly. What happens is as you pull this, this mortar off, or these small lines, the pieces underneath here where we have the gray remain and the more it's a lot easier to pull these little lines off. So all we want to do is pull all these off and uh, we'll give it a shot of gold on both sides and uh, we'll, we'll come right back. All right, so I pulled off all of these little, uh, the mortar lines. Um, there's quite a few of them. You're going to have to really be careful, especially when you get where these stripes are. There are some that go right through here on both sides. Um, you're going to have to make sure you don't miss those. Um, there's a few little masks here that were short, so I just don't want to spray no gold against here, so I've just covered that up. But you can see how now how we've got the two coats of gold on this area, and... Uh, Hopefully you can see that without the sheen of the lights, but we're going to go and give the brick mortar or the, the mortar a uh, single coat of gold. Then we can pull all this off and see how we did. Okay, so we shot uh, one coat of gold over all of the mortar, and now we can start pulling all the masking off and see how we did. Uh, the gray will come off pretty easy because this is, this is over top of something we've already painted. You start pulling these off. Just want to be careful I don't scratch the paint underneath. So just go to a corner and just give it a pinch. This should come off fairly simple. Hmm. I don't know if that shows up on the camera well enough, but you can kind of see how that's looking. Uh, I want to spin around and go on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all the rest of the mask, but I want to leave this mask that's right around the wing. And I'll show you that uh, when I get back, but I'll take everything else off and we'll move on from there. Okay, well, I removed all the masking, and hopefully you can see that uh, with with the light. Maybe, hopefully you can see that um, everything's shining like it's supposed to. We've left this mask around here now. This is where this is where we're gonna move on from here. So now, what we need to do is we need to either put some masking tape around the outside of this, or some extra blue. So, so what I have here is just some spare masking. It doesn't have any cuts on it, so I always keep this stuff around just because you never know when you'll need it again. And I'm just going to cut some, some lines. This, this mask seems to um, uh, have a nice sharp edge when you're painting versus masking tape, so we'll use this stuff. Plus we got it here anyway. Okay, so one of the things is if people are worried about the tack taking paint off, just uh, touch the back side of this and take the tack off so it won't be so sticky. 
And then what you want to do is you want to lay it down right next to this one. Just kind of follow the line. What this is going to get, do is this is going to give you a sharp line where where these masks have met. If they're not in line, that will help that out. Let's take another piece. Okay. So. Now that you got this all outlined, you can pull this other mask off. Now what we need to do according to the paint modeler's guide is we need to paint this a light gray. Um, so I will paint that and we'll come right back. You can just mask off everything else and uh, we'll come right back when I have that done. Okay, well we've given this a couple shots of light gray. We're gonna let that dry for a bit and we're gonna move back to uh, the very first part we had. So with these, we're gonna remove all the little squares and then we're also gonna move these big squares. Take all these off. Put some hair on it. Now this top edge you don't have to be too concerned about. The only one we need to be tight on, or as close to the mask as possible, is the inside one that sits close to the wing. Just cut through the clear as close to that as you can. And remove that section of clear for now. And just like before, I'm going to try and take some of the tact off just so it doesn't affect the paint. And if it does, you can always touch it up. It's just gray anyway, it's just a light gray. All right, now, this one we wanna start just over here and you should be able to see where that other blue mask is. So you should be able to get it right in place. Just as close to the wing as you can get it. And remove the clear. And we're going to give that a spray with the iridescent blue. And we'll be right back and we'll unmask that. Okay, we put on our uh, blue iridescent. And we can just start taking some of this off. All right, well, all the masking is off. You can see that uh, everything come out nice and clean. It's uh, really light. There's no, there's no buildup of paint. Um, you've, this is probably the hardest part of the model to do is the tail section of this. After this, everything should be fairly easy. Um, you can see that it doesn't really take that much time at all. I mean, we were probably, I'm gonna guess maybe two, three hours into this one tail section. I think I've got eight hours into one nacelle, but you can tell your friends once they see the model finished that it took you hundreds and hundreds of hours to paint. And you can t see uh, that it's not really that bad. So get on our Facebook page, uh, show us the work you're doing. And if there's any issues you're having, let us know, because I'm sure if there isn't somebody on the forum site that can help you out, if it's something we can help you out like this, we can uh, put together a video and show the rest of 
how to how easy it is all right well that's it for this uh, video uh, I guess enjoy the build see you later